Yeah, welcome to this presentation. Uh, this is about complex waveforms and sine waves. Uh, so part of the HNC year one engineering science. Uh, not sure which unit it is. I think it's uh, P3. Uh, not sure. Anyway, check the assignment brief and check the lecture on the assignment brief and it fits in. Okay, I'm just going to run you through this presentation of uh, complex waveforms and sine waves and then um, you can pick up your information uh, from here for the, for the assignment. Okay, this is what you will know at the end of the presentation. Characteristics of a sine wave, harmonics, derivatives of sine waves, complex waves, and construction of complex waves. So we're going to look at that. Okay, we need to start off with what a sine wave is. Um, just follow the mouse uh, the, or the cursor. Uh, we start off and we've got our, um, for example, in electronics, our zero volt line. So that's zero volts, there's no potential. So the current moves in one direction and then it turns back on itself and gets less, sorry, it doesn't turn back on itself. It peaks up and after the peak, it sort of gets less and less and less, goes back to zero volts and then it turns back on itself. Yeah. So let's get the cursor. So at this point here, it turns back on itself. And it goes the opposite way. So if you had a piece of wire, the current uh, initially would flow away from you. And then once it's hit the uh, zero volt line, it flows towards you as well. And then again, it gets stronger, 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 the reverse current flow. And then it gets weaker, 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 gets back up to zero volts. And then it reverses direction again. Okay. So um, obviously, you could have a square wave where, you know, it just goes one direction, then it stops and it goes another direction. But this is sort of a gradual increase, a gradual decline, and, uh, and, and vice versa. And what you find is that no point on this waveform is, um, <clears throat> is, is going to be static. So there's change all the time in this waveform. So that means it either increases or it decreases all the time. Um, but you never find like in a square wave. So if you had a square wave, it would just go go straight up, and then it would stay level. So the the signal would be at the same level all the time, and then it falls down to the to the reverse. With a sine wave, there's a constant change all the time, and uh, and that is sort of what makes out to be a sine wave. You know, having this um, this constant change in a certain pattern. Um, Okay, if it's a pure sine wave, there's no harmonic content whatsoever in, in a pure sine wave. So that means um, there um, is not going to be anything of a multiple waveform, of a different type of waveform contained in a pure sine wave. It's a bit like, I don't know how to describe it, maybe like a, a, a prime number. I don't know whether this is a good analogy. Um, you can't divide it through anything uh, other than itself. Uh, so pure sine wave as well. So it's uh, there's nothing else contained in it. Yeah. It's very important. Whereas when you look at a square wave, where it goes up, all the way down, you know, all the way across, and then down, all the way across, up, and uh, if you just follow the the cursor here. So if you look at a square wave, you would have like a multiple of uh, sine waves contained at different levels, at different um, signal strength contained inside a square wave. Okay. Um, there is a, a formula for it as well, and you can see this here when you look at uh, um, how a sine wave is put together in rats and radians, uh, and how you can express it, or you can express it in degrees. So you start off with zero degrees, and you go all the way around, and then you've got 90 degrees up here, 180 degrees down here, uh, 270 degrees, and then we've got 360 degrees. Yeah. So again, uh, uh, we get like a full circle, so we could uh, express a circle in a sine wave. Yeah. Okay, a um, couple of things which you need to understand, need to sort of take a mental note of it. So a pure sine wave doesn't contain any harmonics. Yeah. So you cannot construct a pure sine wave uh, out of different uh, waveforms. Yeah. And maybe I need to go back one term as well. When we look at waveforms as well, there's a component of time. Yeah. You can see this here. This is uh, periodic time, and uh, if you want to find out, you know, how many times it changes per second, it's one over t. So it's one divided by the periodic time of, um, uh, you know, of the signal. So, for example, if uh, if we um, uh, hope I get it right now, I'm doing this out of the top of my mind. Uh, if you look at a whistle, I'm going to whistle, yeah. So that would be um, most likely a sine wave around about one kilohertz. So that's um, 1,000 times I'm um, generating this type of waveform in the air. Uh, so it's 
compressing and rarefying air uh, 1,000 times a second uh, uh, sinusoidally. And you can actually, if you normally, if I did this lesson, I would have an oscilloscope. And I would show you on an oscilloscope and a microphone where I just whistle into it. And you can actually make out the waveform and you can calculate it as well. So you get 1,000 changes per second. So it would be uh, 1 millisecond from there to there. Is this right? 1 millisecond times 1,000 is 1 second, yeah. So you would have 1,000 of these cycles, of these, these cycles sort of stuck in there. Um, and that, you know, if you put, fed this signal into a loudspeaker, it would, you know, compress and rarefy the air into that level and you will be able to hear it as a tone. Okay, so uh, just to go back to this one, uh, pure sine wave doesn't contain any harmonic, so there's no harmonic content in there. A sine wave is a purest shape in nature. Uh, again, this is when you go to mathematicians, they would uh, sing a song about this sort of this sort of stuff. As electronics engineers, all we're interested in is just in, in recognizing a signal on an oscilloscope and um, see how um, you know how well the signal works and whether you know there's any distortion in the signal. As soon as you find distortion, you know you've got an harmonic content. And at that point, you have to put in filter networks to contain the distortion. Uh, what else? We have got any shape away from can be broken down in multiple of sine waves. That's, again, it's a fact. Anything you see, like a square, a triangle, um, uh, you could make up this shape from sine waves. And that's some sort of uh, yeah, mathematical... Uh, amazing stuff, you know. If 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 you get somebody who's into math and and, and you know does all these calculations, we're going to show you in a minute how this works. Um, it's quite amazing when you when you think about it. And then uh, where do we find sine waves? So we find them in audio, which we just uh, tried to illustrate with the whistle. Uh, all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a box, you could theoretically um, break it down mathematically into a bunch of sine waves to uh, describe the shape of it. Uh, waveforms in general, and then also electromagnetic waves as well. So as soon as we, um, you know, get a piece of wire and we start um, pushing a current up and down the wire, uh, suddenly it starts generating an electromagnetic field, and it starts radiating. And you can pick up the um, the waveform a hundred yards away, or a uh, um, uh, hundred kilometers away, or even a hundred thousand kilometers away. Yeah. So, uh, again, Marconi, when he started his experiments, he was just trying to uh, ring a bell and, um, you know, using some sort of Morse key. And, and he was just doing it across his loft and, and he recognized that something was there and it should propagate through the air. And, um, and he, um, he could sort of figure it out how it all works and how it all gets together. And today we're using it in everyday life. I mean, Wi-Fi, um, for one example, radio, television, any, anywhere. Okay, so we've got fundamental and harmonics. Uh, the fundamental, uh, we've got one example here, and you can see uh, this nice sine wave here. And we get one cycle in uh, how many milliseconds? Uh, 20 milliseconds. Is it 20 or 25? 20 milliseconds. Um, 20 milliseconds. Yeah. So uh, that would give us 50, um, um, 50 hertz. Yeah? So we get 50 of these cycles in one second. Now, when you look at this, this is a fundamental, that, that one here. When you look at this waveform here, and let's have a look at that one. So we get where we get one half cycle, we get a full cycle, and then we get two cycles here. So that's the, um, the first harmonic, and that's, that would be 100 hertz. And then we go to the uh, third harmonic, and you can see this here. So we get like up, down, up, uh, down, and, and almost up. So we get like one and a half waveforms within an half cycle and three waveforms within the full cycle. So we get 150 hertz. And then that one right here at the bottom, that gives us two full cycles during a half cycle or four uh, during the full cycle of the fundamental. And that gives us um, the uh, fourth harmonic. Yeah. First, second, third. No, that's a second harmonic. Sorry. Let me, let me, let me. Fundamental is 50 hertz. Second harmonic is 100 hertz. Third harmonic, 150. Uh, and fourth harmonic, 200 hertz. Yeah. So we've got four times the frequency. Just to get it right. Okay. So that's fundamental and harmonics. Just a concept which is there. 
uh, again, one thing I would sort of illustrate this is um, uh, I would, uh, I don't know where I've got it, I used to have an oscillator which, um, which operates at one megahertz and you can modulate it. But as soon as you, so you, you put the thing in and you take a normal AM radio, you, you tune it into one megahertz and, and you know, the normal hissing, the static you get at the back is suddenly taken away. So it's no more static. Static is gone. Yeah. Then you start modulating the, uh, the signal. And once you start modulating it, um, you introduce distortion into the waveform. And then suddenly what happens is you can pick it up at 2 megahertz as well when you go to your radio and you can pick it up at 3 megahertz. So that's the second and the third harmonic, you know, which you pick up on that. And unless you put some filtering in, uh, you could pick it up at uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 megahertz. And so you've got all these harmonics where uh, the distortion introduced generates, uh, generates harmonics. And, and sometimes it's unwanted, so you use filter networks, and that's where we, uh, in the assignment, talk about RLC networks, where we've got like a, a filter to kill off certain frequencies. So we've got low-pass and high-pass filters, so that's one thing. Or we, um, we want them sometimes. We want harmonics. So, for example, if we've got an oscillator that generates these frequencies, and, um, and we need a frequency, let's say, which goes up to about 100 megahertz. So, uh, but we need precision as well, so we can't just take a coil and, um, um, and, uh, and a capacitor, you know, feed them into a, an oscillator circuit and then um, rely on this frequency. If we did this, we, we would have the problem that it could wander all over the place. You know? And the reason is that with, uh, as the circuit heats up, you know, due to the, to the transistor heating up and getting some heat into the circuit, that your components are change in size due to, temp to thermal expansion. And with that, they change the value as well. And so once you change the value of the capacitor, because the distance between the plates or the, um, the plates itself, they, they've got a different size, or the coil expands and uh, it's got a different value, uh, then the frequency changes as well. And once you, you use um, something like uh, uh, 100 megahertz, so that's 100 million cycles per second, that's what you try to generate with your combination of your coil and your capacitor, a tiny change can actually make quite a... Uh, a few kilohertz difference and that means um, you know for the receiving end to be able to receive the signal and not receiving uh, not be able to receive the signal so it's quite critical now the answer for that is we use crystal oscillators and crystal oscillators are much more precise so uh, they've only got a couple of errors which are which are measured in parts per million just maybe two three or maybe ten parts per million but uh, when you've got like a, a, a hundred million and you've got like a really good crystal oscillator and um, the the change you might get in the oscillator is only like uh, two parts per million, it would just be 20 hertz you know, uh, or 40 hertz or less than 100 hertz in, in the frequency you generate. And as far as transmission techniques are concerned, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So you, you get away with that, you, you're okay with that. Um, and so what we do is we, we generate a crystal, we, we produce a crystal oscillator and the maximum frequency you can get out of a, a crystal is about 20 megahertz and then they, they start creating problems. So you get like a 20 megahertz crystal and uh, then we put an oscillator at 1 megahertz, we get a signal out. And what we do then is we just distort the signal deliberately. So we get like a class C amplifier which sort of turns the signal into really choppy signal and is really rich in harmonics. And then we've got a filter network and we pick up the third or fifth or sixth harmonics. So if you want 100 megahertz, we pick up the fifth harmonics. So 20 megahertz times five gives us 100. So we put a filter network in for the fifth harmonic. And then we, um, um, you know, uh, pick up the frequency at the fifth harmonic and um, smooth it off a bit. And we've got a nice signal at 100 megahertz where the fundamental frequency which we use is only uh, 20 megahertz and and all we do is is just by uh, distorting the waveform we are generating loads of harmonics and then we pick up um, the fifth harmonic in this this case okay it's just a little bit on the side where where all this comes from and why it's important to to understand you know the whole thing about fundamental and harmonics and and the whole idea about distortion so if you've got a distortion in a waveform, you, you generate all sorts of problems in your systems and you need to be aware of this. Uh, mechanically, I'm not sure how relevant it is. I'm, I'm sure if you've got like a, an engine 
and the distortion in the signal would be if you've got like a, a dicky bearing or something and it doesn't go around and then suddenly you get all sorts of problems in, including probably the the engine destroying itself because of a, a, a faulty bearing over time okay so the next thing is the whole thing about adding harmonics uh, so we generate harmonics and we've got them at different levels and we add them together so we've got the fundamental here then you can see here we've got the uh, the third harmonic that's right and then we've got the uh, so that's one and a half that's uh, one two two and a bit the third and i think the fifth harmonic the third and the fifth harmonic and we add them together at certain levels and we get something which is a, the resultant yeah, which you can see here that's a green one so the blue one is the fundamental and we've got the third and the um, fifth harmonic we add them together and we get something which looks um, almost like a square wave yeah. so if you carry on this system we get like the seventh and ninth and so on at a certain interval we, we get more a more defined square wave yeah. there are other ways of generating square waves as well like schmidt triggers and so on but uh, but that is just one way of doing it but obviously what we are doing here is we're just sort of trying to illustrate that every waveform um, you can see is made up of sine waves yeah. so at this point if we were in class i would get a signal generator um, i would put a loudspeaker on and uh, we would listen to the fundamental and then um, i would um, i would put the square wave in and you can actually hear um, if you listen very closely you can hear different tones coming through uh, and your hearing can actually make it out and you can almost you know this graph i'm showing you you can almost hear it okay um i've got another graph here so we've got um, um the third the fifth um and and you can see as well that the harmonics as we as we add them together they always become smaller to to generate the square wave and it's all by a certain ratio in a minute i'll show you the formula and then you can see and hopefully it makes more more sense of it but it carries on it's just like auto harmonics yeah so you've got uh, uh, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, and it would just go on and on and on. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is about complex waveforms. Uh, so we've got the first, second, third, and um, fourth, fifth, and so on. And and again, when you follow the mouse, please, or the cursor, uh, when you look at the um, the frequencies, they just get uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. And in this instance, we are using all of the harmonics, not just the odd ones, but the even ones as well. And you get something which looks like this. And it's almost like a sawtooth waveform. Yeah, so it goes up and then it goes down, goes up, goes down. In this instance, we call it composite waveform. Yeah. Okay, you can see the same thing again. So we've got the formula here as well um, to get this waveform. I'm just going to move on a little bit. Uh, so this is the uh, first and the second, and again the resultant almost gives you again the sawtooth waveform by just putting those two together. So you can see, and this is the main point I'm trying to make. Here. You use odd harmonics, you get like a, almost like a square wave, but obviously the uh, amplitude of the uh, harmonic changes, so the the size of the um, the harmonic changes with every harmonic gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You get like a square wave with um, um, with even harmonics, you get something like a sawtooth waveform. Yeah. Uh, again, don't um, get too nervous about the whole thing. So, uh, let's look at that one. Waveforms in real life. Okay, we've got uh, piano and uh, violin, and obviously, you know, a piano makes a tone at a certain frequency, but they are not necessarily generating pure sine waves. The same with a violin. A violin doesn't generate pure sine waves, but it's something else. And this gives it its unique sound. And it's interesting as well, when you look at them, the the frequency for all these waveforms will be the same. But obviously, I can't play a violin, I can't play a piano. But if you, I'm sure you can imagine this. Um, um, if you had a sine wave, it would be like a whistle. A flute would, pretty, would be pretty good to generate a pure sine wave. So it might be just a whistle. Uh, a violin, it's a very unique sound, and it doesn't certainly doesn't sound like a whistle. And the same with the piano. So you would hit the the key, and you get like this bit bit of a jump there. And um, 
and you would get a slightly different sound to a whistle, obviously, even though it may be at the same, um, the same frequency uh, or the same uh, tone. Okay, these are the experiments which I would want to go with you, uh, and uh, but we don't. And this is the formula. Yeah? Square waves are mathematically equivalent to the sum of a sine wave at the same frequency plus an infinite series of odd multiple frequency, frequency sine waves at diminishing amplitude. Yeah? And the amplitude is um, uh, again defined as well. So you've got the first harmonic, so let's say you've got one volt at uh, 50 hertz and the um, the third harmonic is going to be one third, fifth harmonic one fifth, seventh harmonic one seventh, one ninth harmonic one ninth, yeah. and and you would get the the frequency as well at the end of it. And so you would add them all together, and you would get your square wave. Uh, have I got a formula here? Okay, this is the formula for a sawtooth waveform. Let me just uh, does it go again? Let me go back. Yeah, so uh, you can see how they all come together, and they just add it, add it, add it. Okay, it's a little bit of an animation there. And the more you have, the the more defined your your result the waveform comes. Yeah. Again, I don't expect you for the assignment to uh, do some fancy calculations. Uh, if you show me the formula, that's all. Or if you pretty much regurgitate the pre previous slide, that's fine as well. Yeah. So, or I've turned it into a formula. Uh, triangu triangular waveforms, um, again, that's a formula for that. Uh, let's just start again. Yeah, so the more you add, uh, the more defined it becomes, uh, the triangular wave becomes. Okay, I'll right what have we got we've got sine square triangle sawtooth um, uh, task crystal oscillators are known to be stable and reliable the maximum frequency which can be achieved using crystal oscillators about 20 megahertz a lot of receiver receivers etc operated frequencies over 1000 megahertz how can these frequencies uh, uh, achieved using crystals uh, discuss find further typical crystal compressions over the counter okay uh, at least it's up to you. You don't have to do this. Again, we are not within the classroom. Otherwise, I would want you to just have a little bit, you know, of a sniff around on the internet, see what crystals you can actually get. Most of them, they're pretty hard to get hold of today, harder than, let's say, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but um, you can still get them. They're sort of typical crystals for clocks, uh, which I think are 32 kilohertz or something. Um, and then you get like um, crystals for intermediate frequencies, like 10.7 megahertz is a, it's a common one of 455 kilohertz. Uh, but you get also other ones as well. And um, they're, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether they're still around. There used to be companies around where you could tell them what crystal you wanted, cut to what frequency, and they would do it for you. And you could get them there. <clears throat> I think most of them you get today, they're all standardized. And then you've got uh, clever electronics to try and uh, produce any frequency you need from <coughs> from your crystal frequency. Okay, <clears throat> sine wave, purest waveform. All other shapes and waveforms are made up of sine waves. Harmonics are multiple of sine waves. When a sine wave is distorted, it'll carry harmonics and other frequencies. Complex waveforms are made up of multiple sine waves added together. <coughs> For your assignment, you need to tell me a little bit about complex waveforms <coughs> and also um, come up either with this one or that one or that one and tell me a little bit about it. That's all. Okay, and that is the end of the presentation. <coughs>